First of all, it's an absolute pleasure to be among the greatest thinkers and doers of the Chaos community. And I want to thank Dr. Tony Chan for giving me this opportunity. Before we talk about connecting the unconnected world in the 21st century, let's take a step back. There are certain leadership principles that we need to adhere in to compete and to leapfrog in the fourth industrial revolution. Secondly, we need to have a laser focus on business models. And last but not least, we always have to remember that culture eats strategy for breakfast. So let's talk about the principles. The first principle I would like to call it, we need to move from problem solvers to problem finders. So scientists that have enough curiosity to uncover and to find out the root cause of why certain things happen. And with the abundance of data and AI and algorithms that we have, I would argue that any mathematical problem, we could write a script for it and solve it. And definitely with AI moving from general AI to super AI, it's gonna be quite difficult to compete with machines. And I can relate to that story. So in my sector, when I first took over in 2017, we only had a million home connected by fiber. And we had a mission to triple that by three million and a half homes. And the only way we were able to deliver that with a disruptive business model is by surrounding myself with people who are smarter than me and great problem finders. And to uncover the problems associated with that lack of connectivity, we had to ask the five whys. So first of all, we had to ask why the penetration is so low, because we needed to put an incentive plan. Is that it really enough? Why do we have to need an incentive plan? Because the IRR and the return on investment is not lucrative enough for the private sector. And then we asked, well, why is it not lucrative enough? because 70% of the cost has to do with the digging and the trenching. And this is when we figured out that we don't have a funding challenge as our top problem, but a logistical challenge. And we focused on going to the municipalities and putting a regulatory framework that brought down the cost of digging and trenching, which is 70% of the cost by 50%. The second guiding principle for leadership among the science community for the 21st century, I would argue is having the highest level of emotional intelligence. Because if you sit at the table, and definitely among the science community, we have the highest IQ scores. If one individual caps the intelligence of the rest of the table, that will be such a huge opportunity. And this is why we need emotionally intelligent science leaders to be able to harness and to aggregate the combined and the aggregate intelligence on any particular table. Third principle, I would say that we need to have more agitators rather than irritators. And let me explain. So irritators are generally people that want other people to do what they want. Where agitators are people are gonna have enough leadership to push people to do the things they ought to do which is a different orientation and a different motivation. So we need more problem finders, we need agitators and not irritators, and we need people with the highest level of emotional intelligence. And those are the leadership principles that I would argue for us to be successful in the 21st century. If we move on from the leadership that is required for the science community to leapfrog and to compete in the 21st century, to the business modeling, it's very core. Because I think in today's innovation, it boils down to four types of innovation. You have product innovation, services innovation, business model innovation, and process innovation. And the biggest leapfrog opportunity is in the business model, is your ability to connect users and providers like in no way before, leveraging the network effect and the sharing economy. Last but not least is focusing on the right culture. And this starts with the right mindset. We need scientists today that appreciate that the biggest barrier to acquire a new skill or to leapfrog is a mental challenge. And I think we need to foster a culture and an environment for the science community to challenge the boundaries and to leapfrog.